Oh my gosh, do y'all hear that? It sounded like a big flop because it's 12.30 and I forgot that this readathon started half an hour ago. It is a whole 34 minutes into the Prideathon and I'm already failing. Okay, what are we doing? Get your life together. I have a full video talking about the Prideathon that I posted the other day. I'll link that down below. It goes over what this readathon is, who started it, what the challenges are, what my TBR is. So I posted a video with a stack of books that I want to attempt to read this week. The readathon's like seven days. I have a TBR that's like 10 books and I'm not going to read 10 books since seven days. I could. I really could. There's websites called Twitter and YouTube that really prevent me from doing that. Hello my love. <laughs> Long story short, Prideathon is an LGBT readathon that was organized by three people. I will link those people down below. The readathon is what the title is. You read your LGBT books. <laughs> I'm not going to get into the challenges right now. Just go watch my TBR videos. Give me some more money off those views. <laughs> but I do have my stack of things to read right here. Time to decide what to read first. <laughs> it's been kind of an ongoing joke because in my past few videos and my vlogs, I've really only been reading Christina Lauren books. And for this readathon, I was like, oh, finally, I'm not going to be reading Christina Lauren romance until I remember that I own this book. <laughs> but I'm unsure if I want to start with like a short book first to ease myself into like readathoning or just jump straight into excuse me sir i don't know if i just want to jump into like christina lauren you know as one does my first instinct was to post a poll on twitter but i know if i asked if i should read this everyone would vote for this over like these two books that no one's heard of so i think this is my pick i'm gonna dive into this one i wish i could say i'm gonna dive in right now but i have to pee like a mother trucker so i'm gonna go pee first and then we'll dive in also i need to clean up all these books from the floor because if i don't the cats will chew them and claw them and make me want to cry but hell yeah day one we got this huh Blackie also this cat has like three names but I just started calling him Blackie he's April from Aprilius Maximus has a black cat named Blackie and I plagiarized <laughs> okay for real I have to pee so bad this book is about a bisexual teenager who is very out and proud until his family moves to conservative Utah so while he's enrolled at college there nope high school he meets one of his TAs that he begins to develop a crush on and so this is a male male romance with a bisexual protagonist who has to sort of stay closeted in this new community of very judgmental people so it talks about like religion and sexuality and this will satisfy the challenge for reading a book that you did not buy yourself i was sent this gift by will i know you watch my videos so thank you very much i'm very excited to read this and yeah let's just give it a go page 89. I'm having a great time reading this, but he just said Panda Express is gross. <laughs> DNF'd one star. I'm kidding. It's really good and addicting, but I feel like I've been reading this for so long and I've barely gotten anywhere. I would read it all night if I could, but I'm getting sleepy, so I'm gonna go for as long as I can and I'll update you how I'm liking it when I get to the part where I'm about to fall asleep. <laughs> it's 3 a.m. I'm sleepy. I need to go to sleep. But I've been reading since 1 and I made it to page 102 of autobiography. I'm really, really liking this so far. I love the main character. I love that he is out with his family and so it's not like he's hiding himself entirely from the world. You really get to see Sebastian's parents, especially his mom, and how they're supportive of his bisexuality. I don't know, I just really like how this book is unfolding so far. I've been putting some tabs in as I go along just at like funny parts and cute and supportive parts. Sebastian is such a soft boy and he is constantly blushing and he's just so polite and I'm a sucker for that type so I can already sense that this is going to be a sweet but hard-hitting book and especially from the lens of like religion and homophobia within institutionalized religion and within like small towns that are 90% religious people and especially because I'm from Texas Christianity yeah I can see some similarities so it's already kind of breaking my heart but I have read many a book by Christina Lauren as always I love their writing style I'm really digging this book so hopefully tomorrow I'll wake up pretty early I can just read the rest of this in one sitting because I'm really enjoying it I don't think it would be that difficult to finish it in one sitting 
Good night. I did wake up a bit earlier ago. Is earlier ago a phrase? No, but I got distracted on Twitter. So you know what we're gonna do? Yes, my screensaver is the DM of Tahara telling me nice things. Uh, we're gonna go here. See, I'm already on Twitter and I have notifications. So I'm like, oh my God, I wanna read it. We're going away. We're doing this. Bye Twitter. It's for my own good. That 100% means I'm just gonna go on my laptop to go on Twitter instead. But for now, I need to continue reading autobiography. I have no plans for today other than I have a job interview tomorrow that had like an assignment, so I need to do that assignment at some point. So I'm gonna do this instead for a bit. So, <laughs> I ended up having like a little detour and got distracted for the past half hour. It's so rare for me to have like sprints of reading where I actually dedicate time toward that in like a large amount because I tend to get distracted <laughs> and it takes me multiple days to read a book. But because we're readathoning, I've decided what you want to be in the shot. <laughs> I've decided I'm going to actually attempt to do like a book a day type deal. So rather than getting on my computer and everything, I am going to finish this book. Thus far, I have made it up to page 319, so I only have like 70-ish pages left. I'm really, really liking this book, as you can see from all my tabbing. So the love interest is the son of a bishop, and he's very Mormon. And so this book talks a lot about how he's having to grapple with his sexuality while also being part of the religion. And so it deals a lot with the denial of being gay and is it okay to be gay if you're religious and it talks about the shame of that cool thanks so i think there's the half of this book that talks about the main character and how tanner is okay with his sexuality he's such a supportive family but then there's literally the opposite of that where sebastian's parents have verbally said they don't support people being gay and he's having to deal with a lot of like the inner turmoil of not wanting to identify as gay but still having the feeling he wants to pursue this relationship i think the way that it's done talking about organized religion and dealing with homophobia is really really thoughtful because it's not just like, you know, in real life people kind of adhere to two hemispheres. It's either you're religious and you're homophobic or you're an atheist and you accept gay people. But this book takes that stereotype and it's making it more of a nuanced discussion and seeing like how do these two things interact. Obviously we still haven't gotten to the resolution so I'm not sure how things are going to work out but the way that that builds with the conflict I think is really natural and it's making me think a lot. I don't think this book demonizes being Mormon at all. I mean okay maybe a little. But again I just think it's really well written talking about the community and the acceptance of being non Great. So I'm really really liking that part of it. I think by the time I get to reviewing this I'll have nothing left to say So I'm just gonna be quiet continue reading and see how this book ends up because we are we're in a pickle right now If you will. Okay. Hello. I finished Autobiography. I feel like I'm showing off all these tabs cuz like not gonna lie, like the last 20 pages of reading this was hindered by some news I just got and so I had to take a break to cry. We'll talk about that in a sec. I'll ignore it. But wow. I love how this tackled both religion and sexuality while still maintaining like this level of respect for being Mormon while also discussing like the shortcomings as far as acceptance of the LGBT community. Again, I loved Tanner's family and I loved how he was sure of his own sexuality and the ways that he supported Sebastian and coming to terms with his own gayness. I and mean, something that originally bothered me but then I actually started to kind of enjoy was Sebastian's denial of his own sexuality because he didn't 
want to call himself gay because then it's kind of ascribing value to that part of his life that he was trying to avoid or not think about. So I think that ended up being something that really stuck out to me because him having to figure through those emotions and then come to terms with his religion, I think was actually really, really meaningful. In typical Christina Lauren fashion, I think this book was equal parts funny, equal parts heart touching. Something I did want to bring up about this is that I read an incredible blog post a couple months ago, I believe it was. It's escaping me who was the author of it, but I will find it and I'll link it down below. But basically this blog post was from someone who had just recently read this book and was reviewing it, but it wanted to talk about how a lot of people labeled this book as like a cute romance between Sebastian and Tanner and it's wholesome and it's so sweet. And they were saying that we should be more careful with how we label romance stories with those adjectives when in reality, it's really a story that is about hardship and having to figure through your sexuality and having to feel accepted by your family. So it wasn't like a light feel good story for most of this. There's parts of it that I think can be construed as cute and I guess soft and wholesome, but mainly I think that's just Sebastian as a character is those things and not necessarily the relationship between those two. So that's really something I was thinking about as I read this book is that don't be so quick to ascribe like the cute label to a romance when there's parts of it that are and that are really sweet and touching how they confide in each other. They consider each other their safe space, especially in a town that they are not out in so they have to kind of rely on one another to be able to have that mental space but I would not categorize this as like a cute light-hearted romance when it is not those things it is largely about having to grapple with homophobia from your family and your community if there were a sequel to this book which I like let's let let's have it happen if there were a sequel I highly anticipate that it could go into that territory of just being like a feel-good story but I was just thinking about that blog post as I read this once again I'll link it down below because I think it's worth the read so even though it does have its cute parts I think the reason why I did love it so much is because of that discussion of sexuality and religion being born into something and having that instilled in you and the way that that sticks with you but then also questioning that and then feeling the guilt of wanting to question it so I think that is definitely struck close to home. I have a lot of great things to say about it, but I think I'm gonna give this a 4.5 stars, but I have a lot of positives about this to say, but for some reason it just wasn't a full five star read to me. I think a 4.5 still makes it apparent that this book really stuck with me and it affected me because this book definitely has messages that I could relate to and I could, you know, it's difficult, but this is an important book, I think. But yeah, I would highly recommend this book. It's definitely worth your time, especially if you're someone who's interested in sort of how sexuality and religion sort of tangle limbs in closed-minded communities. So, that book went down and it's only 5.30. I said I would go into the reason why I was upset and now I just don't feel like it. I have a job interview for tomorrow, so I don't want to focus on negatives. I'm just gonna go and grab my next read and see what I'm in the mood for. I actually have like a stack of stuff that I could start, but when I think about what I want to read, I have a specific book in mind. Again, I have a TBR video for all these books, so I'm not gonna go into like synopses, but I do want to show off what my options are. So I have Girls Paper and Fire, Unicorn Tracks, You're in the Wrong Bathroom, A Trans Manifesto of 20 Myths, Marriage of a Thousand Lies, Everything Leads to You, my needle liqueur. The Abyss Surrounds Us. Tipping the Velvet. I have so many books. Oh my god. But the one that I want to read, I think. This fulfills the challenge for the oldest book on my TBR that I haven't read yet. I mean, as far as LGBT books go. Ash by Melinda Lowe. This is a Cinderella retelling that I've had on my shelf since like 2015, so I finally want to pick this one up. Whenever I posted my TBR video, someone responded on my Twitter and said that they think I would like this book, and they liked how it talked about like compulsive heteronormativity, and I've been debating on hauling it it just because it's been so long and I haven't read it and I really don't hear that much about it but after hearing her say that I'm just really interested to see to hear what this book is gonna be about and all its messages and stuff so even though I have a lot to do <laughs> I'm gonna not think about it I'm gonna put it off why does my cat have a ball of yarn where did you get that <sighs> hi chapter one ooh these chapter pages are schmancy so I fell asleep. <laughs> I have so much to do tonight. I just want to read. I did start Ash before I fell asleep. I got to page 10. It's just a fantasy world and I wasn't anticipating it would be a fantasy world and so it was like not really drawing me in. So this book has fairies in it. So far it's not very well explained but then again she's on page 10 so like it'll figure itself out. I need to not read right now but I 
feel like avoiding my problems so i'm just gonna read instead okay good evening i have not read all night it's day two of pride -a my mom and i just spent three hours staring at each other and bickering about taxes so i just did most of my taxes I have an interview at 4 p.m. today because it's officially the 15th. I'm basically in just a horrible mood right now. I told you earlier I got some, it's not bad news, I'll just say it. My old neighbor texted me that my childhood home was like back up for sale after we sold it in 2015. And I went and looked up pictures because I knew I would make myself cry if I did but I still did and saw like everything they renovated and how different it looks because they added like a bunch of stuff onto it and now they're selling it for like almost double what we <laughs> sold it for so so yeah that was what I was dealing with earlier and then taxes made me really 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 grumpy and the cats are awake and messing with my stuff and I'm just am I cranky I'm cranky I do want to do a little bit more reading before I go to bed I'm just in a bad mood. I'm in a bad mood. Thankfully right now the panic hasn't set in for this job interview tomorrow so I'm gonna coast on this feeling for a while. I know as soon as I wake up tomorrow I'll feel miserable so I'm gonna take advantage of feeling okay and read because I know tomorrow I'm not gonna be in the mood to read. I'm gonna be in panic mode. I changed my mind. These cats have me in a horrible mood. They won't stop playing. Literally let go of my fake plants, sir. Stop. I am gonna scream. So I'm going to bed so that I don't have to deal with them anymore. I didn't vlog all day today because I was preparing and being very anxious for this interview. Actually that's a whole lie. I thought I was gonna wake up like I usually do before job interviews and like throw up a little bit be very nervous about it but I was fine all day I was just like a little nervous but I actually felt really great just interviewed at my dream company I didn't know this was the last interview before they decide so I have to do like a week of waiting to see if I get it I don't know what I'm gonna do if I don't because it's gonna break my heart I got annoyed listening to myself sing that, so I'm cutting it off for the good of all of us. But yeah, I just got home. I treated myself to some Panda Express, and I'm gonna go for you later. But that's all to say I did not do any reading today. <laughs> Basically, because this is over, I have a whole week to sit around now, so I can just relax for a whole week and read some more. I wanted to do a book a day, so hopefully before midnight, <laughs> I can read something. If I'm not really enjoying Ash, which is the book I'm currently reading and currently not really loving, then I'll probably just move on to something else else and maybe try and get that one on audio but yeah i'm gonna go inside and scream at my family and go read all the nice comments on my last vlog and that's my update i got home from my interview and it, i don't want to see how it went because i don't want to jinx it we'll find out i'll keep y'all updated i haven't read <laughs> but i've given him so many kisses okay love you too bye Basically, I have no motivation to read because I didn't like Ash and I know I could just move on to a different book and like read faster. <laughs> but I know if I don't continue Ash, I'm not going to finish it ever because I've already had a bad experience reading the first 10 pages. So this is my motivation to actually read. I'm gonna put my camera on me and I'm gonna at least try and get to page 50. If we can't get to page 50, I'll just die. I'm on page 14 right now, let's go. Kittens have decided it's cuddle hour. Huh. So I read a little past where I was really struggling with how boring Ash was and literally where I picked up the book, it actually started getting good. <laughs> so the first like 15 pages of this book are really, really rough, but I'm now on page 88, which is a little less than halfway. And it's actually pretty good. I wouldn't say it's super, super fast paced. It's like a fairy tale. So the writing style is more drawn out, like more lyrical. That's a lot of internal monologue and not a lot of dialogue, but it's like this Cinderella retelling, but it's in a fantasy world. So she's dealing a lot with like fairies and mythical creatures that live in the woods. It takes 
takes place from when she's like 12 to as she's growing up and so we're reaching the part where she's growing up. No romance has occurred yet which usually I would be like Ugh, where are they gonna kiss but I'm actually not really minding the setup of this but it is kind of just like average to me at this point and I think that's mostly spurred by the fact that it's just not like grasping me. Like if I weren't doing this readathon and I put this book down I really wouldn't feel super inspired to pick it back up. So I'm gonna try and get over halfway into this book. I can see there's like a part two that little black line so I'm gonna try and get to there and then if that part is interesting see how far I get tonight but me and my boys are gonna do some good cuddles I look like I have no hair it's true I'm bald <sighs> is it Sahara? good morning when I say morning I mean morning it is 8 30 a.m. we are loving it I ended up getting really really sleepy around like 1 30 so I was like but before I went to bed, I got to like chapter 10 of Ash. So I'm on like page 116. I told my aunt I would go to Starbucks with her at 10. So I'm gonna try and have a little reading sprint until then and then get ready. But mamas are having breakfast. We're all very happy and very sleepy. And we're making biscuits. You're doing so good, sweetie. Oh, come here. There's my love. It is truly just dumb bitch hours up in here. Instead of, you know, being a person that contributes to society and um, someone who reads a lot of books, I went to Trader Joe's. <laughs> but to make up for it, I'm at the library. My mom really wants to read a couple books and I told her I would get them from the library for her. And I also want to look at like the manga and graphic novel section here. Maybe I'll be able to sneak in some of those for LGBT reads, but I just want to browse. I'm kind of in that mood, so I'll maybe try and record if I'm brave. I don't know how many people are here. I did pretty well. I only got books that are graphic novels for me. I found Check Please, which I think is a male male romance. And then I found The Prince and the Dressmaker. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm not sure if this is LGBT, but I will put in the research and we'll find out. Editing Whitney, take it away. Hello, past Whitney. This book has a gender fluid main character, hence why the prince needs a dressmaker. And then I got three mystery books for my mom, cause that's what she reads, but we're too lazy to buy them. I'll just get them from the library. I got her Final Girls, this book called The Flight Attendant. I don't know, I Googled the best books of 2018 and that was on it. And then this new series, by, not new, but new to my mom series by Karen Slaughter, who's like her favorite, but I don't know if that series is any good. I'm just gonna dump them on her and be like, here you go. <sighs> okay, I have frozen food in the back, so I need to speed home, but there's a Sonic right there, and I'm wondering if I should get a little something. It's not true. Tell me I've been my... Do you have to, or? I love you so much. Are you gonna sit right here? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it's not true. Tell me I've been lied to. Crying isn't lie. I'm 
sorry, sorry. Psych. So my current excuse for not reading is because I have this gremlin on me. But like, what's new? Why is this an excuse? Also, Mr. Reggie doing a nice little belly up pose. I'm like halfway through Ash. I don't even know what page I'm on because I can't reach it because there's a gremlin on me. I know the reason I'm not reading is because I'm not really loving that book. And here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with it. We're getting to the part where she's like met the love interest, I think. She's like 18 years old now. We've, we've gotten to the part where like she has her evil stepsisters and stepmothers. So like the Cinderella elements are coming. Yet the way that this book is written is it's just so like, when I say fairy tale-ish, I don't mean that as in like, oh my gosh, it's fun and enchanted and lighthearted and magical. It's like, it stops every five pages to give you a story about like, this person walked into the woods and was never seen again because a fairy got them. Like it gives you so many anecdotes about the mythical creatures without any confirmation that those mythical creatures exist. So I'm pretty much convinced it's gonna be like a three or 3.5 star book just because it's so dry. But I have some mini donuts as my dessert. I think because I read most of, this is rude, let me chew, hold on. Warner just threw up in his mouth if he would've seen me do that. Because because I did read so much of it last night, I only have like less than half left. I'm gonna reward myself and read one of the graphic novels I got today. My arm hurts so bad, sir. Do you have to sit here where I have to hold you up? I'm gonna start The Prince and the Dressmaker and yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, so I finished my graphic novel. Just kidding, that's a whole lie. I watched an episode of Haunting of Hill House. So I actually did get a little bit into my graphic novel. I said I would start. I got a whole half a page, which is just so iconic. And I'm just slaying this readathon so much. Subscribe down below. Smash the bell icon. I know I, if I say I'm not in the mood, it's just a flat out lie because I haven't even tried to pick up my book. I was just like, hey, I have a friend named Bonnie and I want to talk to her. So that's what I did. Could I have done that at any point next week when I'm not readathoning? Yeah. Did I? No. I wanted to harass her into watching Haunting of Hill House with me. So now we're both gonna get nightmares and this is where we're left. I don't know if tonight, see I can't even say tonight because it's the next day now, but I was gonna have this vlog up and I don't know if I should read this graphic novel or if I should finish Ash or if I should shower because y'all are gonna notice that I haven't showered in a couple days and it's gonna be Amber Chamberlain all over again. Can I call, can I phone a friend? What do I do? Oh my god, this is, this is oh my god. So the, the jury is out, the jury being one person, Bonnie, that's probably not in line with ethical standards of what a jury should be. But she has decided unanimously that I'm gonna go shower. Why am I making this a whole ordeal? I'm just gonna go get clean, okay. Watch Haunting of Hill House on Netflix. Oh my gosh, I forgot my eyes looked like this, whoops. I've been putting off reading Ash. I know we're tired of hearing me talk about it, but that's what I'm gonna focus on. I'm on page 158, there's like 250 pages, so I'm gonna try and get to page 200 before bed. I know it's not uninteresting, it's just not gripping, so as soon as I get into it, I'll be able to like follow the storyline and get more into it, maybe because there's gonna be romance developing soon, hopefully. But yeah, I also think I forgot to mention that this is a sapphic romance, that's the LGBT element. I think I just said it was a Cinderella retelling. Okay, I got to page 180. But I'm sister sleepy and I'm afraid I'm gonna fall asleep before being able to update before bed. So I'm gonna crash. Oh my god. The book is still so boring. Like I keep waiting for like a massive plot point to happen and it doesn't. I don't know if it's just because the writing of it is not exciting or there's no exciting plot points, but the book just isn't exciting. Like I keep waiting for there to be like this like climactic scene or like an angsty scene, but everything is just so like monotone. Fun story, I went out with Sierra and didn't record a single clip. <laughs> We went to the same bookstore that I went to the other day. We had lunch at LA Burger, which is like the best restaurant of all time. I got my favorite mango soda and I'm rationing it because it's so delicious. Mmm, mmm. So I was just sitting here, barbecue sauce on my titties, and I was on my phone just chilling. My phone just crashed while I was watching a YouTube video and now it's like not turning on not responding it's not dead but i'm plugging it in like what do you want from me but i think it's the universe's sign to tell me stop getting on your phone i'm gonna sit down and read the rest of this in one sitting so i can move on because i know as soon as i get to a new book then i'll feel more empowered to read and this book's not horrible it's just real boring 
Like, I'm sure the reason that there's no audiobook for this is because the audiobook narrator got bored and didn't finish. Could I DNF it? Yeah. Am I gonna? No, because mama didn't raise no bitch. So I definitely got sidetracked by one or ten YouTube videos between now and the last time I updated, but I finished my book finally after I'm forcing Bonnie to FaceTime me so that I could be bullied into finishing it. Basically, this book is just so boring and confusing and it's like I kept waiting for there to be an interesting part but I feel like nothing interesting happened almost to the point where like even the climax of the book wasn't that exciting. The romance never really had any angst that kept you interested in the two characters. Literally I think there were like four scenes of the two characters together and they had like the driest conversations with like no innuendo or like special stuff I don't even know, happening between them. And then by the end, it just felt totally cliche. And I know that it's like a fairy tale retelling, so like it, there's a little bit of like that happily ever after vibe, but it's still just, I finished the book and the last line was so cheesy. I was like, ugh. So I gave the book two stars because I just feel like there was nothing plot-wise that interested me. The characters weren't special. I liked the writing. I liked the idea and like the fairy tale snippets that were in it that were like nods to the original Cinderella. But otherwise, I was very bored. Wouldn't recommend it, especially if it's pitched as a romance. I think that's super misleading. They like don't even kiss until like 10 pages before the end of the book. And nothing before that ever just shows they have romantic interest in one another. So it's not a good example of like a really fun, lighthearted, happy, romantic retelling at all. Yay for keeping that on my TBR for four years and then not even enjoying it when I finally got to it. Next, I don't know what I want to read so I might have Bonnie give me a little helping hand if you will. I got these two graphic novels from the library yesterday like I said but I also don't want to be a hypocrite because in my TBR I said I don't want to read anything that's not on my TBR. Which, I mean, technically these are on my Goodreads TBR, but I didn't own them. So, should I read some graphic novels and make up for the fact that I wanted to do a book a day, Gordo? We're not screaming right now. Should I do a graphic novel so that I can read three books in three days? Or should I start a different sapphic romance? Bonnie, jury's out. You need the graphic novels to, like, cleanse the palette. Valid. I have a male male one and then one with a gender fluid main character. Which one should I read? I'm gonna go with the male male one just because I've heard of that graphic novel and I want to know if it's it. I'm gonna do what Bonnie said because I'm her slave and I'll let you know how it is. can hardly hurt you now. He just wants my hairband. I don't know if y'all know this, but Reggie has a kink for hairbands. They're his favorite. I'll bet you a hundred dollars I'm gonna wake up and that's gonna be in the water bowl because he likes to take them, run away with them, then put them in his water bowl. You nasty. Can you love, can you love, can you love the version of me? Now it's almost midnight, oh my god. I did make it 74 pages and to check, please, I'm gonna give you an updated synopsis on this before I finish it, because I gave you just like the bare bone minimum earlier when I said it was just a male male romance. So this book follows a character named Biddy, who is a freshman in college, he is gay. When he was in high school, he did figure skating, but he's on the hockey team now in college. And so it's about him becoming familiar with his team. And he chronicalizes this as a vlogger. He has a YouTube channel, so there's frequently clips of him like talking to the camera discussing his life so I'm not sure if the romance in here is with him and the team captain named Jack but there's a lot of tension there because Jack's dad has a lot of pressure on him as a previous like Hall of Famer here they are you can see one is like 
sweet, soft, small boy, and the other is like intense, blue eyes, chiseled jaw, angsty. And yeah, also fun fact, the lightning is going crazy. Earlier today I stole the cat tree from my parents' room. It's not focusing. But now they have like a little ladder to the window where they can all hang out and they keep playing with the blinds and knocking each other off the top, which is just fun for them. Oh, you've got your toy. Oh my goodness. Get your toy. So far, this has made me laugh out loud multiple times. I thought from the cover art I wouldn't like this art style, but it's actually a lot better than what the cover shows. It's really fun to follow. I love the characters. All their dialogue is really natural and funny. And this has like the best like jump cuts and transitions, even though you like can't do those in a book. The way that certain panels end and like they flow with one another is so comedic. This author is incredible. So yeah, I'm gonna read the rest of this in one sitting and then post this blog and give you a final review because I need to get stuff done instead of like getting off track on my computer every half an hour. I was gonna get up and like sit in front of my bookshelf and make this like an official clip but no I'm gonna keep laying in bed. I just finished check please. I think I'm gonna give it like four stars maybe 3.5. It started off super strong but then toward like the last quarter of it it really just lost direction i couldn't tell if it was trying to be like a hockey story about like them winning the championships i wasn't sure if it was trying to be like this unrequited love story of like biddy having a crush on jack but then that wasn't really discussed that much i wasn't sure if it was about like the graduating seniors there were literally some panels of this that i just wouldn't read because they have nothing to do with the story at all and there's so many team members and i only care about like three of them and it would do scenes of like characters talking to one another about stuff that I didn't care about so I think it just started to like go off track and I felt like why is this relevant it doesn't even involve Biddy but then at the end it refocused on like you know senior year and their feelings for each other I don't know if volume two of this is already out but I can tell that one's gonna have some tea. It wasn't at the library, so either someone has it checked out or it doesn't exist yet, but I really enjoyed this. The art style was great. It was funny. It ended up being pretty heartfelt, but I think just because toward the middle it just lost direction for a bit, it's not my favorite. I wasn't glued on to every single page. But those are the first couple books that I read for the Pride-a-thon. Since it's past midnight, I'm gonna go ahead and just call this an end to day three. Three or four? I don't even know. <laughs> so hope you enjoyed this vlog of the first couple days. I will see you in the next part. Good night!